Hello and welcome to this week's video homework. This week we're going to be talking about some common misconceptions that people have around evolution. We're going to be identifying some common thoughts and interpretations of evolution that are not supported by science, and then we'll confront those ideas and see what evidence does support evolution. So we'll be starting off with what is not evolution, and then I'll define what is evolution, and then I'll provide you guys with a few more examples and evidence that do support this idea of evolution. What is not evolution? Evolution is not just growth. People might cite examples of these organisms as evolving, but this is just simple growth. A caterpillar turning into a butterfly that's metamorphosis. The evolution of Pokemon is also not what we would consider biological evolution, nor would frogs. In all three of these cases, this is just a change in an individual as they get older. We call that growth, and that is not what evolution is. Additionally, hybrids are not evolution. Evolution doesn't come from sexual reproduction of two different species, into a third new species. For example, lions and tigers can sometimes have offspring together. A liger. These do happen, but often the hybrids can't have offspring. So you'll never see a species of liger because the DNA of a lion and a tiger don't match up enough in order to allow ligers to go on and have babies as well. After one generation, all the ligers die. Sometimes people will also think that you can mix two very different species like a bird and a rat to get something that looks like a bat. And that just doesn't happen. Birds, rats, and bats are all their own unique species. They are all genetically different. And there is no observation of this sort of thing ever occurring. And believe me, scientists have tried. Scientists have tried to cross very different organisms, and they've never been able to get a viable offspring. You may have heard about Lamarckian evolution. This is the story that often gets told, where one slightly shorter-necked giraffe spent its entire lifetime stretching its neck out to reach the food that's on the highest branches. As it got older, its neck was a little bit longer, and then when it had kids, it passed on that new unique trait that it gained in its lifetime, and its offspring stretched and stretched and stretched until it got their own even longer neck. This idea was initially proposed by Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, which said that traits during your lifetime get passed down to your offspring. But that's just not true. Traits gained in your lifetime, like extra muscles, things you learn like a new language, scars, tans, things like that, those new traits are not passed on to your offspring, because they are not genetic traits. In evolution, only genetic traits get passed on. So let's discuss what is evolution. Evolution can be defined really, really simply. It is when an entire population, an entire group of one species, changes any of its genes and the traits that are controlled by those genes over multiple generations. That is simply what evolution is. If you are looking at this moth, it's called a peppered moth, we have collections from the early 1900s of populations of peppered moths. The vast majority of them were sort of a whiter color and only a very few were dark black. But throughout the 1900s, as we created more factories and more pollution, the habitat that these moths lived in changed and the trees that they spend most of their time on became darker. And so then the darker moths were able to survive better. And we can see in more recent populations that the population of all the moths now is made up of more of the dark moths than the lighter colored moths. It's a change in a population over time. So what causes evolution? Many things do. But natural selection is one of the key mechanisms for evolution. Natural selection can be defined by three events that cause a fourth. The first three is that a population must have genetic variation. That's DNA variation, different traits in the population. Those traits must be inherited to their offspring. 
and there must be differential reproduction, which is just a fancy way of saying that some organisms in that population have more offspring than others. Imagine these are all mosquitoes over here. There would be a large population of mosquitoes, but humans don't like mosquitoes, and so we apply pesticides that kill off the vast majority of the mosquitoes. But some of the mosquitoes might have a small genetic variation, DNA variation, and the pesticide kills most, but not all, and it especially leaves behind, leaves alive, the individuals that had the mutation, the DNA variation, that allowed them to resist this chemical pesticide. In future generations, these mosquitoes would pass on, inherit, their traits for resistance, or sometimes not, and you can see that the mosquito with the resistant trait had more offspring than the two mosquitoes without the trait. So there's differential reproduction. And then if we continue to select for individuals with resistance, future generations will have more of the organisms with the resistant adaptation than in the past. And that would be evolution through natural selection. Okay, another example. Let's look at genetic information. That genetic variation that we were talking about before, it comes from mutations to the DNA. Mutations are just any change to the DNA. So if we look at DNA of different organisms, we can count up the similarities and we can calculate how similar various organisms are. This chart over here shows different species and how similar their DNA is to humans. You can see chimpanzees, 98%, gorilla, 97.5%, orangutan, 96.5%, gibbons, 95%. And based on that information, we can construct a phylogenetic tree that shows that humans and chimpanzees would be the most similar to each other because they have the highest number. And then humans, chimpanzees, and gorillas would be grouped together. And then orangutans, gorillas, and humans would be grouped together. And the most distant in this example would be these gibbons, which would be the farthest back in an evolutionary tree. Another example of evolution occurring can be seen in the inheritance of traits. So if you look at a lot of tetrapod organisms, these are land organisms that have four legs, you can see some similarities in their limbs despite very, very different functions. So these come from a human, a dog leg, a bird wing, and a whale's fins. All of them have very different functions, but they have this similar bone pattern. One bone, two bones, lots of little bones, finger. One bone, two bone, little bones, fingers. One bone, two bone, little bones, fingers. One bone, two bones, little bones, fingers. That same pattern over and over gives evidence that all these creatures shared a common ancestor. You can contrast that with an organism that has legs, like a spider, but their limbs don't show that same bone pattern at all. Spider limbs are very different, which tells scientists that spiders evolved separately than all of these other tetrapod creatures. Spiders have a different ancestor. Finally, we can also see examples through direct observation. We actually can see evolution occurring. One of the most obvious examples is in antibiotic resistance. Now this is very similar to the mosquito example before. Say you have a bunch of bacteria that have genetic differences and you use a lot of antibacterial soap or antibiotic pills in order to fight off and kill off as many of those bacteria that might cause you to become sick. However, due to some of those genetic variations, not all the bacteria will die. Some are going to survive. That's the 99.9%, .9%, which means 0.1% are going to survive and reproduce. When they reproduce, they pass on their traits. And if we continue to use antibiotics, we continue to kill off all the bacteria that aren't resistant, leaving only resistant bacteria alive. The resistant bacteria end up having more offspring than the dead bacteria because they're dead. And in the future, the antibiotics no longer work because we only have antibiotic resistant bacteria in the ecosystem. 
So I encourage you, if you don't want to die, don't overuse antibiotics. Evolution will straight kill you. But that's all for now. So I hope this was helpful. And I'll leave you with a song. And there will be a link down in the doobly-doo. Be sure to come to class with some great questions. And I'll see you soon. Driver! Oh!